What the fuck's up, y'all? PTB <clears throat> coming back at you again with another motherfucking dope ass album review. We are here today to take a look at Camelot, the Black Halo. I got my brand new Ignea hat on. Um, the the band was kind enough to send it to me, so shout out goes to Ignea. Thank you very much for the hat. Um, you know, I bought it, but still, uh, I gotta support, gotta support the band, you know? I'm fucking excited to get to this one, man. Um, the first track that I checked out by Camelot was called, uh, March of Mephisto. And, um, I, I love the sound so much that I was like, fuck it, let's do an album review. I put it up on the poll and everyone fucking voted for it. And this is really pissing me off. Hang on. Everyone fucking voted for this. We had a five or six way tie uh, between the symphonic and um, folk, basically songs. What's up, man? Hey, yeah. Thank you. Um, I decided to get the golden version because I know that uh, for a fact that Ignea, um, the realms of fire and death is, is going to be coming one of these days on the channel. Uh, I don't know when, but it will be coming for sure. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into it, dude. Shout out goes to Infinities for giving me all this information on Camelot. And apparently this is one of his favorite bands. And he's with us today, so pretty awesome, man. Thank you for sending all this to me. So Infinity sent me a Wikipedia, and he sent me a whole bunch of stuff. I'm like, I'm going to read all this. He says, I would urge you to read the first part of the album's wiki for the basic details for biography first here. Okay. And then <clears throat> we're going to do that. And then after that, I'm going to read the rest of the stuff that you said. Uh, let's see. All right, cool. Wikipedia, the Black Halo. Um, so I would read this, um, but, you know, it's about the band biography. So I think we might read both, but I don't know. We'll see how long each. Oh, my God, this is fucking long. All right. Holy fucking asshole. Um, hang on. <sighs> All right, suck it up, boss. You got to do your job. All right. We're going to read both. Read them for the album. Then we're going to read one for the band. So the band's first, then the album. Camelot is an American power metal band from Tampa, Florida, formed by Thomas Youngblood. In 1987, the Norwegian vocalist Roy Kahn joined for the album, sieged Perilous, and shared <coughs> songwriting credit with Youngblood until his departure in April 2011. On June 22, 2012, Youngblood announced their on their website that their new vocalist would be the Swedish singer Tommy Kervik, who was first featured on Camelot's album Silverthorn as the main vocalist, co-writer, co-songwriter, and lyricist. As of 2022, Camelot has released 12 studio albums, holy fuck, three live albums, two live DVDs, and 20 music videos. Oh my god, that's insane, bro. Early Years, Eternity, Domin Dominion, and Siege Perilous, 1987 and 1998. 1998, excuse me. The band was formed in Florida in 1987 by guitarist Thomas Youngblood, we already said that, with Richard Warner on drums, Rob Beck on vocals, and Dirk Tan Van Tilborg on bass and keyboards as Camelot. Wow, with a C, why'd they change it? This name was originally suggested by Youngblood's mother since she loved John F. Kennedy. I don't fucking get it. In 1988, they recorded the song Breaking the Silence, composed by Youngblood and Warner for Tampa Bay's Metal Mercenaries, The Invasion, a cassette-only comp compilation of various heavy metal bands from Tampa Bay, produced by Keith Thumper Collins, ex-bassist for Sabotage. In 1991, Sean Tibbetts, then using the stage name Sean Christians, Joined as bass guitarist, Rob Beck was placed on vocals by Mark Vanderbilt and Dirk Van Tilburg left the band. <clears throat> the band changed its name to Camelot with a K due to there being a local record, record store named Camelot and to set it apart from Camelot Mythos. This lineup recorded in the same year the band's first demo. 
1992, Glenn Berry replaced Sean Christians on bass guitar. And the following year, the band recorded its second demo. After this, David Pavlico was recruited as a keyboardist. In 1993, the band signed a deal with Noise Records and released its first album, Eternity, in 1995. The band's next album, Dominion, was released in 1997. Later that year, after a tour in Europe, founder Richard Warner departed the band and drummer Casey Grillo... uh, yeah, I got my standby phone. Casey Grillo was brought in. In 1998, Mark Vanderbilt was unable to tour with Roy Kahn of Conception was recruited as the new lead vocalist. <clears throat> when Roy Kahn was selected, he had to prove himself by skydiving with the band. Wow. When these new two members... With these two new members, Camelot released its third studio album, Seas Perilous, the band undertook its first tour later that year, playing across shows in Europe. The fourth legacy, Karma, Epica, and the Black Halo. Following their first European tour and departure of keyboardist Pavlico, the band returned to Tampa to write music for a new album titled The Fourth Legacy, released in 1999. In mid-2000, Kimlott undertook the new Allegiance tour through Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and the Netherlands, and Belgium and Italy, Greece, and Spain. Oh my god, fuck that up. <clears throat> during which the recordings for Camelot's first live album, The Exposition, were made. A few months later, the band released its fifth album, Karma. The sixth album, Epica, was released in 2003. Both Epica and the band's seventh album, The Black Halo, which was released in 2005, are based on Johann Wolfgang von Goethe version of The Legend, the Legend of Faust. A man who sells his soul to the devil... To support the new album, the band toured through Europe with Advance as a supporting band. And Japan. Wow, they've been to Japan. During the first leg of the Black Halo World Tour 2005, Camelot played a headliner show of Epica and Cody Pelto. Cody Pelto. In Japan, the supporting group was Silent Force. The band also played at the Bang Your Head Festival in Germany and the Grass Pop Metal Meeting in Belgium. In 2005, Camelot made its first music videos for the songs The Haunting, Somewhere in Time, and The March of Mephisto from the album The Black Halo. Both videos were shot by the prolific director Patrick... Is it Patrick? Ulysses. Oh, Ulysses. Excuse me. On October 5th, 2005, Camelot added Oliver Palatai... As the fifth official mem- band member, Palatai played both keyboards and additional guitars on the second leg of the Black Halo World Tour. Camelot visit North- visited North America, Canada and the United States, South America, Brazil, and Europe, Belgium, the Netherlands, Norway, and Sweden on February 11, 2006. The band's live DVD, One Cold Winter's Night, was filmed by Patrick Ulysses at the Rockefeller Music Hall in Oslo, Norway. It was released on <clears throat> November 17th, two days after my birthday, 2006. I was 16 years old. No, 16 years old. Uh, no, sorry, I was 17 years old. Yeah, I was 16, sorry. I mean, yeah, 17. Was I? Yeah, I was 17. <laughs> uh, whatever. In Germany on November 20th and other parts of Europe and on November 21st in the U.S., in Canada via SPV Records. The Ghost Opera, Poetry for the Poison, and Khan's Departure. <clears throat> in late 2006, the band returned to Gate Studios in Wolfsburg, Germany, to record the album Ghost Opera, which was released on June 1, 2007. In Germany on June 4th in the rest of Europe, and on June 5th in the U.S., the album was recorded and mixed at Gate Studios and Pathway Studios in Wolfsburg, with the producers Sasha Payeff and Miro, music videos were made for the songs Ghost Opera, The Human Stain, Rule the World, and Love You to Death. A reissue of Ghost Opera, labeled, labeled Ghost Opera, The Second Coming, was re- released shortly after its predecessor. <coughs> contains the original, the entire original Ghost Opera album, and a second C with 10 live songs recorded during a concert in Belgrade, Serbia. With the additional bonus tracks, Seasons and The Pendulous Fall, 
Epilogue and Rule the World Remix, the World Tour 2018, 2008 to 2009 for Ghost Opera included three legs in Europe and one U.S. tour. Support bands were Ed Guy, Firewind, Leaves Eyes, I love Leaves Eyes, Delane, I love Delane, and Serenity. During the summers of 2008 and 2009, they played festivals like Wacken Open Air, Rock AM Ring, Sonosphere Festival, and Metal Rock Fest in L- Lilyhammer at the TT Circuit Assen that they played as support with Within, Within Temptation and for Iron Maiden. In December 2009, Youngblood announced that the bass guitarist Glenn Berry had officially left the band and then had been replaced by touring bassist guitarist and former member Sean Tibbetts. <coughs> in January 2010, Camelot started working on their ninth studio album in a cabin in Norway. In Norway, it was said that the band was exploring new sounds, and that the topics of the new album would be diverse. During e- early 2010, Camelot published the title of three songs for the upcoming album on their official website: "The Great Pandemonium," "Hunter Season," and "Thespians Drama." They also revealed. The guest musicians that would appear, Simone Simons from Epica. She provided vocals for the ballad House on a Hill and the album's title track. And later Gus G of the Greek power metal band Firewind. <clears throat> on March 25th, 2010, they began the Pandemonian Over Europe tour, which ended on April 26, 2010. Afterward, the band revealed... The title of their ninth studio album, The Poetry for the Poisoned. It was released by Ear Music, the international label of the entertainment entertainment group Adele. In Europe. On September 10th, 2010, and by the band's own label KMG Records via Knife Fight Media and Dismanic Distribution in North America on September 14th, 2010. A music video for The Great Pandemonium was directed by O. o Lingval and was released on September 1st, 2010. Poetry for the Poison entered the U.S. Billboard 200 charts at number 74, selling 6 100 copies in its first week. During the summer of 2010, they played a festival summer tour, which included festivals like Whack and Open Air, Rock and, Rock and Ring, Tusca Open Air Festival, the last festival of the year was Siget Festival on August 14th. <clears throat> September 16, 2010, the band announced that Khan, Khan has fallen seriously ill without during rehearsals for the upcoming North American tour just a few days before its scheduled start and had returned to Norway. While it was initially reported that the band would continue the tour with the Norwegian vocalist Michael Eriksson, of Circus Maximus in Khan's place. The band later announced that it would p- postpone the tour of Khan, though one show was performed with Ericsson at the Prague Power USA 11 Festival in Atlanta, Georgia. On September 10, 2010, however, on December uh, however, on December 16th, due to Khan's lingering illness, it was announced that Fabio Leone of Rhapsody of Fire would replace Khan for the remaining and rescheduled dates on the Pandemonium over Latin America, Europe, and North America tours in 2011. <clears throat> and later, the 70,000 tons of metal crews and 2012 other, guitars, other guest singers appeared on selected shows such as Simone Sines singing The Haunting and Don't You Cry, Tommy Karavec singing Center of the Universe, Eden Echo and the Human Stain, Shagraf as Mephisto on March of Mephisto and Memento Mori, Alisa White Gluz, also as Mephisto on March of Mephisto, and Atle Peterson on Karma. On April 15, 2011, the band released Poetry for the Poison and Live from Wacken, a limited tour edition containing audio from Khan's last recorded show with the band. The new singer in Silverthorn. Following a period of uncertainty, uncertainty Khan and Camelot released separate statements on April 21st and 22nd, respectively announcing Khan's departure from the band according to Youngblood. The band was already searching for a new singer. With the deadline for submissions at the end of January, on June 22nd, 
Camelot introduced Seventh Wonders Tommy Karavec as their new official vocalist. Karavec had previously appeared as one of the guest singers on the 2011 Pandemonium World Tour. Their first show of Karavec was on July 12, 2012 at Masters of Rock. <coughs> Camelot returned to German label SPV GMBH. What's up, Anina? To release their 10th record, their first with Karavec, which was unveiled as Silverthorn in July, along with a release date of October 26, 2012. A music video was released for the first single for Silverthorn, Sacrimony, Angel War of Afterlife. Silverthorn was greeted with positive reviews, and the band once again charted in the top 100 on the U.S. Billboard charts at number 79. The band joined Nightwish on their Imaginarium World Tour in North America as special guests during September and October 2012 in the period leading up to the release of Silverthorn along with guest vocalist Elise, Elise Reed from uh, uh, Amaranth and Elisa White Gloves from March Enemy. Following the North American tour, Camelot embarked on a European headlining tour during November 2012 with support, with support on the tour coming from Xandria, another band I've already reacted to, uh, Triosphere and Blackguard. The band also toured new countries on Silverthorn, including Australia, Korea, and Taiwan. The band toured during 2013 with the band Delane and string quartet Eclipse. During his this leg of the tour, keyboardist Oliver Palatai sat out while he and girlfriend Simone Sines of the band Epica awaited the birth of their first child. Epica's keyboardist Cohen Jensen filled in for Palatai. The touring cycle... For the album, oh, you guys know each other? Nice, cool. The touring cycle for the album ended with tours in Europe, North America, and finally in South America 2014. In 2014, the band took some time from touring to concentrate on working on the next album. They only played two festivals in Europe, Sweden Rock Festival and Masters of Rock Festival, and two club shows, one in Trondheim and one in Har 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 Harlem. In Harlem, they played a special acoustic set that included the live performance, live premiere of Welcome Home and the acoustic premiere of Karma, Haven, The Shadow Theory, <clears throat> and lineup changes. On February 23rd, 2015, it was announced that the 11th Camelot album will be called Haven. It was released on May 5th of that year. Elisa White Gloves, Troy Donna Donockley, and Charlotte Wessels appeared as guests on the album. Three music videos were released for Haven, Insomnia, Liar Liar, Wasteland Monar Monarchy, and My Therapy. The album was well received by critics and fans, which resulted in entering the U.S. Billboard charts at number 75 and the Billboard Hard Rock charts at number 1. Wow, that's impressive. Shortly before the release of the album, Camelot became a new world tour, began a new world tour to promote the album, which started in North America with Dragon Force as special guest. During summer, they played at Masters of Rock, Cavarn Cavarna Rock Fest, and Rock by the River Festival. Later in the year, the band returned to Europe with Cobra and the Lotus, and Gus G as support. Between their shows in Milan and Strasbourg, they headed to Japan over the weekend to play at Loud Park Festival for the first time. 2015 was concluded with the second leg, with the American tour again with Dragon Force. Kim Lott's focus in 2016 continued on live shows in support of Haven and brought them again to Europe, but also toward Japan and South America. In 2016, the band announced that following the end of the third Haven tour and a couple of more touring dates, they would be working on their new studio album. February 2nd, 2017 marked the second time for Kim Lott's joining the metal crew's 70,000 tons of metal <laughs> the band opened for Iron Maiden and Ghost with Exodus at the San Manuel on July first at the uh, July first, two thousand seventeen, at the San Manuel Amphitheater in San Bernardino. KC Grillo did not attend the show, so Alex Landenberg from Luca Turrell's Rhapsody filled in. Two thousand seventeen concluded the Haven World Tour with shows in Russia, Greece, and Israel. On January 25th, 2018, Camelot announced their 12th studio album, The Shadow Fury. 
It was released on April 6, 2018. Lauren Hart, the lead singer of Once Human, and Jennifer Haben, I don't know, I think that's the lead singer of Beyond the Black, right? Beyond the Black, appears as guest on the album, and the album entered the Billboard Hard Rock charts at number two and peaked the Amazon Hard Rock and Metal charts at number one. Three music videos were released for the Shadow Fury, Phantom Divine, Shadow Empire, Amnesiac, and Mindfall Remedy. Camelot announced the longtime member Casey Grillo had departed from the band to February 15th, sorry, February 5th, 2018 to support, to pursue other musical and touring opportunities and to focus on his drumhead company on the same day Firewind drummer Johan Nunez was announced as a replacement drummer. After the release of the new album, the band began the Shadow Tour to promote the album starting in North America with Delane and Battle Beast as opening acts. After only two performances, the band announced that Johan Nunez would be sleeping away due to injury and that Alex Landenberg would be his live replacement. Over the summer, they performed at European festivals. They toured Europe as headliners with support from Lee's Eyes, Visions of Atlantis, which will be the feature after this album review, Circus Maximus, and Dynasty, followed by a Japan tour with special guests Witherfall and an Australian tour with Val- Valhalla Lore. Is that Valhalla Lore. Camelot joined the Metal Crew 70,000 Tons of Metal for the third time on January 31st, 2007, 2019. They returned to Europe in the spring with a special guest, Evergrey. I fucking love that band. And Visions of Atlantis. Alex Landenberg was later announced as the official drummer on April 10th, 2019. During the summer, the band performed some exclusive European concerts and festivals, including headliner shows at the Lupolo and Rock Festival and Z Live Rock Fest. Camelot concluded the Shadow Tour with another North American leg in the fall with support from Sonata Artica and Battle Beast. Never heard of Sonata Artica or Battle Beast. The band started live release I Am the Empire live from the 13 was recorded at the 13 in Tilburg, Netherlands. On September 14, 2018, the Charlotte Wessels, with Charlotte Wessels, don't know who the fuck that is. Who is that? Uh, Delane? Uh, Elise Reed, the lead singer of Amaranth, and Elisa White Gluz, a lead singer of Arch Enemy, and uh, old lead singer of The Agonist. Eclipse and Sasha Payeth. Who is that? After Forever and Epica. Okay. As special guest, the DVD Blu ray for the live, live release was later announced on June 3rd, 2020, with a release date of August 14th, 2020. The first bulk and upcoming 13th studio album. On February 26, 2020, Camelot announced that they would be releasing their first book, Veritas, a Camelot legacy via Rocket 88, which will include band memorabilia as well as studio live and personal photos from the band's career marking the 13th anniversary of Camelot's founding. Holy fuck, this band is old. In a June 2020 interview with The Jones Show, Youngblood revealed that he, Karavik, and Palatay, Palatai, uh, have been working on new material for the upcoming 13th Camelot album. We have material for a new album right now that we are working on. Everything is fresh, but it still has a signature sound that we wanted to have, and we feel it's important. That's the trick for an artist. You've got to make sure you give fans what they expect, but you don't want to give them the same thing that they have already had because you are not growing. And it's just going to be boring, but we have been able to do that. Yeah, very true. In two interviews with Face Culture and AMP Reacts, holy fuck, I watch that channel. Youngblood had also revealed that a number of 25 songs has been written for the new album and would say would focus on the 13th of them. <clears throat> Which would focus on 13 of them. Both Youngblood, both Youngblood and Karavik had also stated that the band planned to release their new album in August or September 2021, though originally was set to be released in March. On October 13, 2020, Youngblood confirmed that there were 12 songs for the album and the band were preparing to enter the studio to record their 13th studio album. When asked about the album's songwriting approach in an interview, Youngblood spoke that the album would, will contain a mixture of new elements and influences with material that fans should expect. 
There had been no updates for upcoming album release since passing the 2021 deadlines, but Camelot produced two music videos for the album in May 2022. In the following month, the band announced that the final touches of mixing are underway for the album, which is planned for an early release of 2023. In addition to being confirmed as a headliner at the 2023 edition of the Proc Power USA, the band will now support the album by going on a five-day tour in Brazil with Turrell, Leon Rhapsody, and... February 2023. Holy fucking shit, that's a long-ass biography. All right. Current members of Camelot are Thomas Youngblood, guitars, backing, and vocals. Oliver Palatai, keyboards, additional guitars. Sean Tibbetts on bass. Tommy Karavec, lead vocals. Alex Landenberg on drums and percussion. Um, Rob Beck, for- former members, Rob Beck, Dirk Van Tilburg, Richard Varner, Mark Vanderbilt, David Pavlico, Glenn Berry, Roy Kahn, which is the lead singer of this album, uh, Cassie Grillo, Casey Grillo, and jo- Johan Nunes. Live session members are Howard Helm, Gunter Werno, Michael Erickson. Is that the same guy that's from Opeth? I think it is. Fabio Leon, Sasha Payef, Michael Milo Rodenberg. And I'm not going to leave. I'm, I am not. Going to read all this shit down here. But holy shit. Discography. Eternity. Dominion. Siege Perilous. The Fourth Legacy. Karma. Epica. The Black Halo, which we'll be doing today. Ghost Opera. Poetry for the Poisoned. Silverthorn. Haven. And finally, The Shadow Theory. Alright, that was a fucking long ass read, boys and girls. Uh, I'm fucking ready to jump into this, but first we have to read the biography on The Black Halo. The Black Halo is a highly acclaimed seventh full-length album by the American power metal band Camelot. It was released on March 15, 2005 through Steam Hammer Records. It is a concept album inspired by Goeth's Faust. Continuing the story introduced in Epica. It is the second and final record of Camelot's two-part rock opera about Ariel, a character based on Heinrich Faust. Epica tells... Part 1, while the Black Halo tells Part 2. Well, fuck, I fucked that up. Uh, Goa Foss has, is also broken into two parts. The Black Halo features guest appearances by Simone Simons, Epica, Shagraf, one of my favorite black metal bands, Dimu Borgir, Jens Johansson, Stratovarius, and several editors. The album was released on vinyl in the spring of 2009, along with Ghost Opera. The characters in the Black Halo. Ariel. Is Ariel a guy or a girl? Oh, okay. Cool, it's a guy. Roy Khan plays Ariel. Ariel is a curious, determined, and arrogant man, an unparalleled genius, and an unaccomplished scientist and philosopher. He has become disappointed with the inability of these disciplines to answer his deepest questions and seeks to uncover the universal truth that they have failed to provide. He strongly believes that discovering such transcendent knowledge is the only thing that they can make his life worthwhile. In Epica, Ariel's quest for his truth led him to making a blinding deal with Mephisto, or the devil, under which Mephisto would supply him with worldly power and knowledge. In exchange, if Ariel ever experiences a moment in which he is so content that he wishes to linger there forever, his soul will belong to Mephisto. After a reunion with Helena... Ariel left her to continue his quest, driving her to commit suicide. Ariel is based on the character Heinrich Faust from Goef's Faust. Helena, Mary. Helena, is that Simone Simons? No, sorry. Mary, Marie. Helena grew up with Ariel and loves him deeply. Uh, She is the only person that Ariel has ever truly loved. She represents innocence and all that is pure and good. In Epica, after Ariel left to embark on his quest for unlimited knowledge, ultimate knowledge, she went in search of him and eventually found him. Though they stayed together for a long time, Ariel left her to continue his quest. Helena, distraught at this, killed herself. Now in heaven, she is watching over Ariel. Helena is based on Gretchen from Goef's Faust. Mephisto Shagraf Mephisto is a rebellious angel who was cast out of heaven. He desperately yearns to re-enter heaven and be reunited with God. He deeply disdains humans, whom he considers inferior beings unworthy of God's love. 
In Epica, Mephisto made a bet with God that he could claim the soul of Ariel, God's favorite man. If Mephisto wins his bet, he can re-enter heaven. But if he loses, he will be contemned, condemned to hell forever, for all eternity. Mephisto manipulated <coughs> Ariel into a contract whereby Mephisto would provide Ariel for worldly power and knowledge, and in exchange, if Ariel ever experiences a moment of such deep contentment that he wishes to linger there forever, his soul would belong to Mephisto. Mephisto is the only character whose name was left as it was in the original Foss story. Marguerite Simone Simons, a young woman living in the town in which Epica ends, and the Black Halo begins. Marguerite's voice and appearance are similar to Helena's. Her characters, her character was inspired by an appearance of Helen of Troy and Goes Foss, but she is named after Gretchen and Goes Foss, Gretchen being a nickname for Margaret or Marguerite. Mar Marguerite. Continuing from Epica, Ariel is still stricken with grief and sorrow over Helena's death. March of Mephisto with Ariel nearly under Mephisto's total control, the fallen angel brings Ariel a beautiful young woman named Marguerite, who looks and speaks like Helena. Ariel seduces Marguerite and the two sleep together, which completes Mephisto's manipulation of Ariel. When the lights are down, the morning after Ariel regains his memory, breaking Mephisto's control over him and comes to his, sentence, his senses, he apologizes to Marguerite and explains his story, begging her to leave, but saying that they might meet again someday. The Haunting, Somewhere in Time. Ariel leaves Mephisto and wonders how all the pain he had caused could come about as a result of his good intentions in searching for the answers for the meaning uh, to the meaning of life, Soul Society. He concludes that it is imp impossible to find these answers on Earth and that he must lie in heaven alone. Interlude, De Gracia. Realizing, realizing that his sins have prevented him from entering heaven, he begs God for forgiveness, but he hears no sign from him. Abandoned, heartbroken, he realizes that he will never be able to reunite with Helena, nor find the answers he seeks. He looks back on the suffering that he has caused to everyone he knows and concludes that it can never be undone, this pain. With this, Ariel prompts himself into action and decides to confront Mephisto. He crosses the river and, and approaches Mephisto's castle. Moonlight. Resigning himself to death, he approaches Mephisto. Interlude 2. An assassino molto silenzioso. Uh, and what does it mean? Assassino. It's, it's Italian. Hang on. It means a very, a very silent murder. Ariel announces, denounces him as treacherous and evil. He trade trade is a traitor 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 traitorious tra traitorious or treacherous he cuts his ties with mephisto and resolves to live a good life like helena did even though his sins have damned his soul to hell anyways the black halo ariel states that the humanity will always struggle with the very questions that ariel has been trying to answer throughout his journey this prompts him to a sudden realization that love is the ultimate answer to life and that the true love between himself and Helena was thus a part of it. Even before he left on his quest, he knows that. He, now, he knows now that, even having found his answer, he will never be truly satisfied, and that his free will allows him to create his own meaning of life and his own destiny. With his questions finally answered, he comes to a state of transcend transcendental understanding and sublime joy so strong that he wishes to linger at that moment forever nothing ever dies this moment of total satisf satisfaction sat satisfaction brings into effect the contract that ariel made with mephisto and thus his soul now belongs to the fallen angel as ariel's soul begins to leave his body mephisto prepares to claim it however helena intercedes to god on ariel's behalf since ariel has rejected all evil in the face of certain damnation, he has redeemed himself, and God allows him to enter heaven with Helena. Mephisto, his bet with God, lost, wails as he is cast into hell forever. Memento more. With the story over, it is revealed that Ariel's tale is a playset for a New Year's Eve festival, similar to the framing device of Goa Faust. Interlude 3, Midnight, 12 tolls for a new day. The festival ends with a tribute to tragedy, comedy, and a... 
Sith cyclical nature of life, a serenade. Holy fuck, that was long. All right, cool. Fuck it, I just did it now, man. It's a little late for that. This is it, man. I am fucking ready. I'm fucking ready. I'm fucking ready. This is going to be my full album review to The Black Halo by Camelot. And uh, I'm going to go also read this um, Infinity Z's thing that he said. So he says, here are other things you should know. As it said, the album is a concept album, which is the story continues from the previous album named Epica. I already read that. The plot is all written in the album's wiki, but I don't recommend that you read it until you get to, re- to review the said other... Oh, motherfucker. God damn it. Oh, whatever, man. <laughs> Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Most of the songs will go straight into each other, something similar to Mechana's albums. Okay, there are still some pauses, but you'll know it. The album has one hidden track and one bonus track. The hidden track has an official name as the second act. It's supposedly to be played before the album starts. The bonus track is called Epilogue. From the Japanese edition, both of the tracks are uploaded on my channel in high quality here. The album has three guest vocalists, Shakurath, Simone Simons, and Mary Youngblood. I recommend you avoid watching the music videos because they're short and they, they don't have the full song. All right, let's check it out, man. The first track is called The Second Act. Oh, this must be it. Oh, wet, damn. Good evening, sir. We've come to see Camelot. They well, haven't started yet, have you they? just made it for the second act. Uh, I hope you'll have your tickets, because it's sold yes, out, yes, yes. and there is... Uh, First row. It's, it's nine and ten. Let's hurry. Come Middle on. entrance. Straight down the yes, aisle. Sir. Yes. All the way down. It's pretty cool. I love plays, so... You ready? Mm-hmm. Let's go. The opening, opening uh, sound for an opera. It's called a, it's called a, um, it's a sound, a sound check, basically, for symphonies. The March of Mephisto. Featuring Shagrath. Now this one I've already heard, but I fucking love this song, so... Get over how cool that harmony is right there.
This is the only music video on the album, right? I'm pretty sure, right? I don't remember this part being in the video. So just the haunting in this one are the only music videos? Love that guitar thing. So clear. It's gonna lead right into when the lights are down. And when the light, yeah, when the lights are down. And this is the moment that Mephisto sends Marguerite to seduce Ariel.
so far. Is that a keyboard? That's cool. Oh man, listen to this solo. This kind of sounds like Queen's right a little bit. I don't know why, but it does. Roy Khan has an influence with Jeff Tate from Queens, right? I definitely hear it in his voice. So we're gonna count that as a stop, um, right there, because it, it it did stop and then it went right into the next track. I like this. This is really good. Um, that solo on that last song, very very cool, man. Very very fucking cool. I love that. Like, that was like a keyboard with a fucking... A guitar. That was cool. I was like, that, that's something that, like, Rush or Queensryche would do. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's super unique, man. That's, that's really unique to hear that. Again, you know, like, this is a 2005 album, but... Like, I'm a huge Queensryche fan, so... Anything that sounds like Queensryche, I'm fucking... I'm game, dude. 